This painting was a painting that hung on my wall for a while, a year, a couple years. Um, I liked it when I got done with it, but I ended up kind of starting to resent it. And I did so because it was really old and dusty and it kind of just didn't pop. It looked like it belonged in my grandma's house or something. So the first thing you just saw there that I did to try to address that old dusty look was to um, put in some really sharp, strong shapes right there. I don't know why I picked those two little runners that go on top of the sewing machine, but I did. I, I, I felt like those really needed to stand out, so I put a, made them all white and then used the pencil to put a little shadow underneath and that kind of made them stand out maybe too much for right now but uh i'll probably i think i go back in and just address it and tone it down a little bit i actually do that pretty often like i go through the painting and i'll think i got it set but then i'll step back like i think it would be fun for me to just film my body moving to the painting and away from the painting to the painting away from the painting because i'm always going zooming in with my eyes and then going back and looking at the composition as a whole and a lot of times I, i'm just not good enough of a painter um right now at least to be able to like keep that composition in the back of my mind uh while i'm painting so i'm constantly having to remind myself like right here uh that is just too gray um i can see it now uh, but at the time that I was blocking all that color in right there, uh, that was just too gray and I can tell because I don't like it. It just doesn't, it, do, it doesn't pop hard enough off of the color of the sewing machine. Um, that sewing machine is a sewing machine that I used to own. I, I, we moved a little while ago and I don't really know if it got, I don't know, I can't, I haven't seen it in a little while, but it's kind of a cool object. It, it works, and I, I think we originally bought it to actually sew clothes with, but um, it ended up getting a, a new life as a still life object. It's a really cool object that I like to paint. Um, I do way better painting. Uh, oh, by the way, this wheel right here gave me a ton of trouble. I painted it probably three or four times. That's the first try. And I think I might like it best right there. I think I got the shadow best. I think I, it's got some like brown weird thing and the perspective's actually wrong. It looks like it's like coming out at us rather than going like back up against and fitting into the back of the sewing machine. But I kind of like that. Um, on this, uh, this wall right here, I thought was just too bare. I wanted something right there. So I decided to put a, a painting in there. I, I often kind of do a painting in a painting. I like that, I don't know why, um, but it just kind of gives the viewer something to think about. But another perspective that's kind of wrong is that frame, like it doesn't quite go to the vanishing point. But when stuff gets a little bit off like that, it actually is not necessarily bad. I mean, it, it's a balance. You can't have the whole thing too far off, but when stuff gets a little off kilter, sometimes it looks cool, it adds interest. You can see I'm blocking this back in. There's a spot right in front of the where the um, sewing machine sits. I just painted over it. That I probably would have left some some spots like that. Like you see that I deliberately went in and have the bottom of the wall kind of like bleed into the top of it. That's kind of a cool look. It almost looks like the wallpaper or the plaster is like chipped off or like it, it, it was once painted painted over by somebody but then it's it's chipping up into the into the old color that matches the bottom of it um here's the wheel again again trying to figure out that shadow it, it was hard i when i don't actually have something that i'm looking at like a photo or an actual still life setup or a person or something that's right in front of me i find that my paintings my drawings they they're like half as good as what they what they are when I'm actually looking at the the object right in front of me in real life or in a photo. Um, photos are good. They have to. I I find that they have to be pretty big. I put them on my whole computer screen and use that as a reference because if I don't have a reference, it's not 
this this right here um, was just a, an afterthought, but I think it turned out really well. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the painting, that little electrical outlet. Um, it's not much, it's just something simple. It didn't take long, but I think it turned out really good. It added to the painting. This is a good example of something that I paint on there and it looks like legit like a kindergartner painted it at first. And that can be a little scary because you're like, whoa, what am I doing? But that, it, it kind of like was one of, one of those things where you get the color in there and you shift it around and oil paint is forgiving like that, that, that I went in there and although I don't think it turned out awesome, it turned out way better than it, than it did when you just saw that part right at the start. Here's another picture in a picture. Um, this one, I just did a little farm scene. Kind of cool, kind of neat. I was thinking about just leaving that wall really blank and stark, and that would maybe make the, the sewing machine pop even more, but I just couldn't resist, and I put a tiny little picture up there um, with a little wire that I did in pencil, and then, yeah, I go in and then make a little nail. Um, the shadow and the light is really important on that. Um, to, to, to just make that tiny little nail head pop, um, it's pretty important to get the shadow and the shape and the shading all, all correct. Okay, there's where I go back into the plant, um, putting some highlights on it and stuff, and it, it ended up turning out much better than it first started. Put a little cord there. Again, you need a little, a, a little shading there, a little glare of the light coming off to give it some dimensionality. I went in with the pastels and uh, just used those to really get that effect of the yarn. Like I really wanted that yarn and I, I was having trouble doing it with the, with the paintbrush. Since this one already had some mixed media, it's got the oil paint. I used Liquin, um, it's got oil pastels and it's got pencil. I figured why not just use a little bit more of those oil pastels. So this is the finished painting. I like it. I don't. I still don't really love it, to be completely honest. But I feel like it turned out pretty good. And it's definitely an improvement from what I had before. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks very much for watching, and hope to do this probably like every two weeks. I'll I'll, I'll usually be starting off uh, fresh from a new canvas, but I just had this old canvas, so I figured I might as well might as well use it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.